It's another day, yeah. left jab, right jab, this is MMA. MMA Mixed martial arts, quick body parts, undefeated when I pick a mooded champ Who the victim looking in my crystal ball, I predict the winner yeah. Never stop fighting, if you lose, keep your chin up keep your chin Know up. how the game go, I'm a small fella uh -huh. Welcome to the show, this the MMA fortune teller yeah. The MMA fortune, MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. What's up, you guys? We got a special edition breakdown. Breaking down two different types of events here. We got Bellator 257. And of course, we got Jake Paul versus Ben Askren. Uh, possibly the biggest match of the year. A lot of you guys have been reaching out to me, asking me to, to break down this fight as well. So, uh, you know, might as well as put it out there. Uh, you know, I definitely will be tuning in for the fight. I'm interested to see how it plays out. I think it's a little bit more of a circus show, but let, let's see. You know, let's see how it actually plays out before we judge it too much. Uh, Jake Paul, the dude has been showing a little something with the gloves, and then Ben Askren is a, a world class athlete, even though it's not really with the hands. So we'll see how that all plays out. Um, but yeah, we'll, so we'll start things off with the Bellator. A card we got Bellator 257. I'm gonna break down the main card and I want to touch upon a few other fights throughout the card as well because uh, Bellator put together a nice little card here. Um, and again, like I said, we'll just touch upon some of these uh fights earlier in the card. Saul Rogers, ex Ultimate Fighter contestant, uh, fighting out of England. Uh, dude is a, a nasty striker, has good, good knockout power, he can put anybody out. Uh, taking on Mads Burnell, ex UFC fighter. You know, a guy that, that has some good grappling and is a decent fighter. A lot, some people were high on him back in the day, if you guys remember. Obviously, he's since been cut from the UFC. He's fighting over in Bellator now. Um, you know, this is an, int an interesting fight. I I've been high on uh, Saul Rogers in the past, and I think I'm going to edge Rogers to win that fight. Uh, but we'll see how Rogers does with the takedown defense and whatnot. Uh, Rogers has been having, you know, a tough time over the last couple of years. You know, at one point in time, he was undefeated. 14-3 and three at this point in time. Uh, you know, actually identical uh, records here as Mads Brunel is also 14 and 3 and I'll, I'll edge Rogers there so that, that's a fight you can have on your radar Pedro Carvalho uh, you know he's fighting once again taking on JJ Wilson the undefeated fighter uh, who you know in his last fight he pulled off a, a pretty exciting victory there but I'm going to take uh, Pedro to win that fight I think Pedro bounces back in the win column there and uh, we'll, we'll take out JJ Wilson Wilson uh, you know although talented with the grappling and whatnot he's, he's not that muscular he's kind of frail in there he, you know he needs to put some muscle mass on i think pedro should be able to handle business there um we got victor nemkov also fighting uh, that's a fight you guys want to watch raymond daniels two and one as a professional in the mma game this guy's a world-class kickboxer uh, in my opinion he, he may hold the most spectacular knockout that we've ever seen in a mixed martial arts bout if you guys know what i'm talking about it's about a i think it was a 720 tornado he was jumping up in the air he froze his opponent and then just cracked him with the right hook uh he he's always a pleasure to watch you know he's he's had some nice knockouts uh over in the kickboxing game and in the mixed martial arts game so i'm hoping he strings off another victory there and uh real quick too i want to see how old raymond daniels is at this time uh, uh you know only two and one as a professional right now and he's 40 years old you know that's the thing so Got into the MMA game a little bit too late. I would have liked to have seen him, you know, fighting fighting over at MMA earlier, and maybe he could have put something together. But he's forty, and uh, you know, maybe he'll he'll put a show on for us and knock out a guy that's five and four, uh, and Peter Stownak. Um, what else we got here? Um, Julia Budd taking on Diana Silva. Julia Budd, you know, one of the more underappreciated women's mixed martial artist fighters or mixed martial art fighters, excuse me, uh, a girl that's very very physically strong. She can grapple. Uh, you know, she, she likes to use the ground and pound and, you know, she's a big, big favorite going in that fight. You know, keep an eye on that fight. I, I know some people that like to stack her up on, on, and stack her up in some parlays and collect a little bit of money here and there. But the line is really, really high right now. So, um, you know, I expect her to handle business there. And then, uh, you know, that, that makes it makes it um, or that brings us to the, the main card here. And we'll start talking about these fights here. We got Veta Ortega taking on Desiree Yanez. Flight uh, fight taking place in the flyweight division. The line is dead even. 
both these girls, you know, right at minus 110. I've seen a lot of people bouncing back and forth uh, on who they're going to pick here. Um, and, you know, breaking down some tape on these girls, you know, uh, Dirty Dez. How about Dirty Dez? Uh, Desiree, to me, seems to be a little bit more of the more athletic fighter there, a little bit more nimble and uh, possibly the better striker. Uh, but when I break down Veda, Ortega's uh, fights, you know, she seems to be a very, very tough opponent. She marches forward in all her fights. Uh, you know, she, she mix in a little bit uh, of the takedowns as well. And uh, that's why I'm going to edge her to, to win the fight. I think maybe she can get some takedowns and uh, and sneak out this fight here. It is a very close fight. I, I do like her her will, though, and, and uh, her mental toughness. So, you know, that, that's mainly the reason why I'm going to take her there. I did see Dirty Dez taken down here and there in some of these fights, and I wouldn't be surprised if she does. But if she is able to keep the fight standing, you know, she, like I said, she might be a little bit more athletic and a little bit uh, better of a boxer and whatnot. So, um, you know, maybe she edges the fight out on the feet if she can keep the fight standing. But sometimes with these these lower caliber, you know, women's mixed martial, mixed martial arts fights, some of these girls don't have... Uh, that go to takedown defense, and that that's really the deciding factor in some of these fights. So that's why I'm going to edge uh, Veta to win the fight. But you know, a fight that, oof, I don't I don't really feel too confident in one way or the other. Uh, and both these girls the same height, up in their their lower thirties. And uh, yeah, I'll take the uh, the Boise Idaho native Ortega to use some grappling and, and edge out a victory there. And the next fight, I'm excited for this fight. This was a fight that was supposed to happen. Uh, towards the beginning of 2020, of course, COVID put it on halt. Paul Daly versus Sabah Homasi. Paul Daly, a guy that uh, is, is a true treasure of the sport of MMA. If you guys follow him on Instagram, you saw a live video. He was talking about how he knows he's at the end of his road. I think this might even be a retirement fight for him, uh, which is a little disappointing. You know, the way his career uh, kind of capped off over in Bellator. I would have loved to have seen him have another opportunity in the UFC. But of course, after sucker punching... Josh Goschek, uh, that was never going to happen. Dana White says he will never fight in the UFC again, and that was true when he said it. Um, but, you know, an excellent knockout artist. Uh, you know, really one of the more underrated knockout artists in the game. A guy that's always working on his overall mixed martial arts game, as you see right here. Uh, looks like he's uh, getting a black belt in jiu-jitsu, I believe. So, um you know, this, this guy is a very, very well-rounded mixed martial arts fighter. Fighter, One of the best fights I've ever seen was him and, and Nick Diaz. If you guys remember back in the Strike Force days, you know, he came into the UFC. He was laying dudes out left and right. Remember watching this fight live here? Uh, 55 Gs. I guess he got a bonus that night. But he was knocking dudes out like crazy. The nickname Semtex was very fitting. And uh, now he's taking on a guy in, Huma in Homasi. This is a guy I'm very familiar with, you know, uh, you know, Training at American Top Team, I bumped into this guy a couple times, uh, you know, at, at the local bars and whatnot. He's a real character. I've seen him wiling out in the bars, all drunk, acting crazy. I know he was working at a, a male strip club, uh, you know, a strip club that uh, uh you know, uh, a, a lot of the heavy girls like to uh, to attend and and I guess throw some dollars at these types of guys. But uh, that's a thing that actually happens here in South Florida. So you know, I, I know that um. You know, he, he's a funny dude, you know, and now I believe what he's strung off about four victories in a row. Um, yep, about four victories in a row. But if you take a look at the opponents, I have not been that impressed with them. Uh, took out Curtis Millinder where he was able to exploit Curtis's takedown defense. And Bobby Volker, an ex-UFC fighter that, that's, you know, very up there in age and way past his prime. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I'm not being fooled by this smoke screen here. Paul Daly... 38 years old. I don't care about that. You know, I know he's like we talked about how he's coming into his retirement. Paul Daly is the better fighter here. I think this is a major step up in competition for Sabah. I think Paul Paul Daly is going to spark him. And even if he doesn't get the finish, I think that he's going to be able to to stuff the takedowns and keep himself off the fence enough to to score points and and beat Sab Sabah Hamasi here. Um, again, you know, Paul Daly. You know, this guy has had some big fights against you know big time grapplers, and and he's worked the takedown defense. Um, you know, that he's, he's trained for some guys that are way, way more formidable with the grappling than, uh, Hamasi. So I think this won't be an issue. And, you know, the betting line right now is right around minus 185, minus 195, I think. And, um, I think that is, uh, not a bad line really. If you ask me, I think Paul Daly handles business there and, um, gets a knockout and possibly his last fight as a mixed martial artist. See him handling business against Saad Uwad there. Um, you know, and that, that's how I see that fight going there. 
In the next fight, we got Corey. Overtime. Anderson taking on Dolfa Tishan. Yaga Shamiradov fighting out of Turkmenistan. I've been breaking down some footage on, footage on him earlier today. And uh, this guy's been putting some victories together. This guy seems like he's a, a very capable opponent. I saw some good takedown defense. I saw some power in the striking. You guys know the deal. Corey Anderson, uh, you know, good overall fighter, a very well-rounded mixed martial artist, a guy that if he gets you down to the mat, he can make you pay. We saw that in his last fight where he, uh, you know, put some damage on Melvin Manoff, a guy that more of a more of a striking-based fighter, you know. Uh, before that, you know, Corey was knocked out by Jan Blakovic in his last UFC fight. Corey's chin has been tested before, and, uh, you know, he's been put out, so I don't see any reason why uh, Yaga Shemiradov can't knock him out. I, I do think that if he connects, he'll put him out there. Um, you know, only five foot eleven, he's gonna have a significant height disadvantage. I think he'll have a little bit of a reach disadvantage as well. Um, I'm not sure how comfortable I feel taking Corey at a minus one seventy five line here. Um, like I said, his opponent does seem seem to be capable, but but overall, I do like Corey. I like Corey to win the fight. Corey's a good dude too. Uh, big fan of Corey. You know, uh, everything that he stands for. He's a cool guy. A cool guy. Don't necessarily agree with everything that he's about, but a lot of things I do, and he's a cool dude. Seen him on Joe Rogan, and um, you know, I think he probably handles business here and he pulls off the victory. But you know, like I said, this guy, you know, he will show up, and if he lands a big shot, you know, expect Corey to be put out. And also, if he can make, if he can maintain st stuffing the takedowns, keeping this fight on the feet, maybe it plays out closely on the feet too. So uh, keep an eye on that as well. And then um, let's see here, man. We got uh, the main event. We got Bill Davis taking on Vadim Nemkov. Vadim Nemkov is a guy that I'm, I'm very high on. 13-2. and two. This is a guy I've been watching for a long time, though. You know, training at a team, Fedor, uh, says Alexander Nevsky. Uh, but, you know, this guy is a, a, a team Fedor product. Uh, this is a guy that is, is nasty on the feet. He's really coming... To, Coming to his prime now at 28 years old. We saw what he just did against Ryan Bader. Uh, you know, put on an absolute amazing performance in that fight. Outclass Bader. Vadim can stuff the takedown. He can completely style on you on the feet. His striking is very diverse. He's a nasty fighter. Uh, the frame is, is very nice. You know, he's six foot, has a 76 inch reach. Uh, you know, he, he's not a small boy for the division. Not the biggest guy, but it's not a small frame. He could he can battle in there with the biggest guys in the division. Uh, Phil Davis, you guys know the deal with Phil. Very good wrestler, ex-Penn State wrestler. A guy that, you know, I don't know, he never really put it together on the feet so much, but a guy that really was able to implement his style throughout his career and pull off a lot of victories. You know, Phil Davis lost to Vadim in the, the first time around. It was a split decision. Going into this fight now, I feel that uh, Vadim has only became a, a better fighter, and I feel like Phil Davis is only on the decline, quite honestly. Uh, you know, Phil Davis, you know, even though he's coming off some wins, you know, had a split decision victory over Machida. Uh, you know, if you ask me, you, you put Vadim in there with uh, Leota Machida, and I think that he's getting finished. So, uh, like I said, Vadim is, is going to his his prime, the prime of his career, and uh, I like Vadim Nemkov here to win the fight. The line is right around minus 210, I believe, right now. So, um, you know, for two guys that battled and it was, a, a, you know, a split decision, and you look at the minus 210 line, you might not feel extremely comfortable about that line there, but all things pointing in Nemkov's, direction in my opinion since the last fight so uh, i like nemkov there and the line seems reasonable or seems pretty accurate in my opinion uh, so so that's how i feel about that fight all right now we got the big fight jake paul versus ben Askren. um i guess you know how, let's let's speak on this for a second here you know this guy jake paul i never really kn knew about this guy i never really heard about this guy back in the day i guess he was some type of big star, you know, on YouTube and whatnot. I think it was more so for the younger dudes, younger kids. Um, but I, I'm, I still don't even know what made him famous. I have no clue. I thought he did, I thought he did like prank videos or something on YouTube. I don't even know if that is accurate or not. Maybe you guys can comment below and tell me what he's fav famous for. Um, all I know is I start to hear, start to hear about this guy a little bit. Next thing you know, I saw a boxing match with this dude against this dude, KSI, who I don't know who that is either, but I guess he's famous in some way too. Um, I've watched that that entire fight, you know, broke that fight down. And, uh, you know, I remember even back then saying, okay, this guy has some decent hands. This guy is not just uh, some YouTube guy that, does not, that doesn't know how to fight. Obviously, since then, I, I've learned a lot about him. I know he had a wrestling background as well, was a decent wrestler. He's a real athlete. And um, he's been putting it together with the hands. I mean, we saw him in his last fight where he knocked out Nate Robinson. And, you know, 
that was a nasty knockout. It was a really, really nasty knockout. Here's the thing, though. I mean, if you know what you're watching and if you know anything about striking or boxing or MMA, I mean, that guy, Nate Robinson, had absolutely no hands at all. You could tell that he's quick as hell. I mean, the way he was moving with his footwork, but he just didn't know what he was doing. He was just charging in with his hands down. And, of course, you know, he got slept in a nasty way, face planted him down. One of those epic type of knockouts. And uh, we've seen Ben Askren uh, on a, the losing end of an epic knockout, of course, against Jorge. Uh, but now, you know, Ben, he's stepping into the boxing ring. This guy is an, an, an ex, or I shouldn't say an ex-wrestler, but, you know, a very high caliber wrestler back in the day. Still, obviously, in, you know, engages in wrestling, trains wrestling. You know, he's, he's very engaged in that whole community. Uh, boxing and striking has never been his forte. He's a guy that even in the MMA game, I truly believe he really didn't put that much into his striking. He felt that confident in his grappling, and he went in there, and he went to take dudes down and try to ground and pound him. And for those of you guys that are familiar with his work in Bellator and whatnot in 1FC, you guys know how dominant he was. You know, I know some of you guys are only familiar with him from, from his UFC days uh, towards the end of his, his MMA career, but this guy was the real, real deal back in the day. And uh, I think if he was younger and in his prime, you, you would have really saw that in the UFC as well. But uh, the point I'm making is I, I really don't know how confident I am in in his boxing. I haven't really seen nothing from it. The only thing that he does have going for himself is uh, is that you know he, he's a world class athlete. I know he has a crazy work work ethic. Uh, looks like he's put in some time with uh, Freddie Roach. That's always a, a very very good thing over at Wild Card Boxing Gym. One of the best boxing trainers in the world. Um, I think this fight will be competitive. I think Ben will have the, the cardio edge, the toughness edge as the fight goes into the later rounds. He has a granite chin. I don't really expect him to be knocked out by Paul. But I think Paul, at the end of the day, might be a little bit more athletic and a little bit more polished up with his boxing at this point in time. A little bit younger, fresher. And uh, I'm going to edge Jake Paul to win this fight. I think he probably wins it. You take a look at the line. I think it's right around, what, minus 175 or something like that, 180. I forget exactly what it is. But Jake Paul is the favorite. I don't know how comfortable I feel in that. I think there's a lot of question marks you know, going into this fight, but I think Paul does handle business probably at the end of the day. And, uh, I don't understand why this guy has almost 15 million follows and, uh, what, what this, what he does. I don't know what he does. I don't get it. Um, see him putting some work in the pads here. Personally, I think that I would sleep in myself, but I don't know. I can't get the big fight. I would love the payday. and uh, But Ben Askren's going to be the pick. And uh, yeah, I'll be watching. He ain't getting a follow from me, though. I don't know what this is about. I don't know why everyone follows this dude. But uh, yeah, the pick has to be Jake Paul. But I'm rooting for Ben Askren big time. I hope he pulls off the knockout. That'd be epic. I don't see it happening, but it'll be epic. And uh, whether Ben likes it or not, he does represent the sport of MMA going into this fight. And it would be a feather in the cap for us as MMA fans if he goes over there and whoops this dude. So the pick is Ben Askren. And, uh, or I should say the pick's really Jake Paul, but I'm hoping Ben Askren wins the fight. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Comment below. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Signing out. The Teller. The MMA Fortune the MMA Teller. Fortune. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The Teller. The teller.